Hi folks, it's Colin here. In early 2004, Andrew Rover had a problem. The brand was starting to look old. The Rover 75, whilst a classic design, along with the 25 and 45 with their beautiful twin headlight arrangements up front, was starting to look very, very aged prematurely. And unfortunately, whenever they had deliberately retro styled a range, this is the kind of thing that was going to happen. So they're faced with a problem. How can we facelift these vehicles? MG Rover didn't have too much money left on their back pockets. Certainly hadn't made its way into the back pockets of the individuals who were running the organization yet. That's a story for another video. So what did they do? Well, they decided to facelift the range. They brought the facelift of a 25, a 45, a 75, and the end, a ZR, a ZS, a ZT as well, all matching. They made the effort of trying to make the components as compatible as possible, so you didn't have to have excessive spending. Case in point, the uh, 75 and ZT rear bumpers both became identical. Previously they looked the same but they were different. That sort of stuff all the same one. But along the way as well they created some additional specifications for the year and in 2004 onwards they created the car behind me. Now I believe that this actually is an excuse to show people that the best MG ZT is in fact a Rover 75. Sounds like heresy, sounds like madness, I know Hear me out. Let me introduce you to the Rover 75 Contemporary and let you guys make your minds up. This is a model and specification that has been completely slapped on. And if you're a total beginner to the Rover 75 or MGZT and you're thinking about buying one, this is unquestionably a fantastic starting point for you. Let's get ripped into the video and I hope you enjoy it. So this is her. This is my MBB Starlight Silver um, Contemporary SE 2004 Diesel Auto. Now, before we get into it, I'm just going to point this out. This chrome strip should not be here. I know it should not be here. It's on the car because it's all I currently have to make the car look right, look nice, etc. Um, it's a wee bit damp because it's absolutely freezing. I'm filming this when it's just turned freezing, officially zero degrees out here. As you can see, very presentable car. It's 2005 example. And I'm sure a lot of the enthusiasts will know straight away with the... Uh, number plate exactly where this has came from i've been led to believe it's a birmingham car um i recently got new number plates with the ng rover bits and pieces etc on the car regardless um it's not a standard contemporary se it started off life as a 135 um where to start well i think the obvious one first of all is probably the alloy wheels now this is what i've done myself um, I'm a big fan of these Fat 5 alloys, um, the flat spoke ones. I've thrown them onto my car. As a daily, I just want it nice and easy, easy to clean, easy to maintain, that sort of stuff as well. And I like to be able to have a quick look at my brakes. Speaking of brakes, you'll notice that the brakes fill up those wheels very, very well. This car has been upgraded with um, the full 190 front and rear. So we have the 325mm front and then we have the 276 vented rear as well. You can just see that in there. Originally it had been tried to also use the 190 brake booster as well, but it found it created a really weird position on the uh, brake pedal on the automatic. So compromise was reached where it actually has fully braided hoses all around. And yes, there are MTEC discs and pads on the car currently. Front seating area, a beautiful, comfortable, low sitting seat. Heated, obviously, goes without saying. And you know, you have to turn around and appreciate this, that Rover got so much of this right when it came to the Contemporary. But again, this one's had a few tweaks. Some of you may know that this one's got a full walnut dashboard and steering wheel compared to the Black Oak. I'm going to put a picture of the Black Oak, which was a standard fit. But all this was a range of options as well. It sort of makes you wonder, what was MG Rover thinking whenever they were offering a car of this specification as a direct competitor to one of their own specifications? I mean, all this wood could be ordered for an MG ZT with just a tick of one button. And as we enter into the cabin, as you can see, a beautiful, luxurious leather. Unfortunately, it's not 
It's only about 30% leather. MG Rover secretly actually replaced a lot of the leather on the full leather vehicles like this with synthetic leather over the years. Um, this happened in, as soon as this was actually full spec, offered in 2001 with the MG ZT. This is the full, as we call it, MG ZT leather, although it is now more commonly associated with contemporary. Now, following on, obviously, it goes without saying that the Rover 75 Tour has spectacular flexibility. Again, this is why I'm encouraging people to say if you're thinking about a 75 ZT, the Contemporary SE Tour is the one for you. We have a few optional pockets here for storage and bits and pieces and things like that. This car has been upgraded to a Harman Kardon subwoofer, amp, all those sorts of goodies. You also have this nice safety divider. This is not a dog guard. Do not confuse that it is. It's often advertised as. We have this wonderful parcel shelf. But truthfully, the best feature I always think of a Rover 75 Tour is this. The opening window. Now this is commonplace knowledge to everyone who's a Rover enthusiast. But honest to goodness, this is just such a practical thing from setting shopping in. Maybe if you're out with the dogs, having dogs sitting out the back window at a park or whatever. It's just such a handy, handy thing to have. I've actually seen people use this as kind of like a crash area for kids as well, for young babies and all too. Whenever they've been out at picnics and car events and all. It just staggers me the uses that people find for this. And it's tragic that we don't see it more and more in modern cars. With the ever-reliable M47R diesel engine, in this particular example made it with the automatic gearbox, it just makes for a wonderful, relaxing journey. Um, personally, I always feel that actually, believe it or not, out of all the engines, the contemporary best suits a 18 turbo automatic, just because it gives you that smoothness, lightness and refinement, and a little bit of power as needed and required. I think for me, if I was recommending one, that would be the engine to go for overall. But on a daily, everyday basis, if this was going to be your main car, the diesel is unquestionably it. A few of you will notice a few things different about the engine bay as well. That's all going to be kept for later videos about this specific car, as this is slightly tweaked, shall we say. So why do I love the Contemporary so much? It's essentially just a top spec MG ZT. There's no doubt about it. Find one. Find a good top spec MG ZT, and especially trying to find a good top spec MG ZTT. This is where I'm going to blast your mind with numbers here. And unfortunately, miles is not necessarily my specialty. We all know the production numbers of the two cars very greatly. The Rover 75 typically had for the time frame of availability and let's not forget the contemporary was only available for 18 months it counted for 14 percent of total rover 75 sales made now that's from 1998 the end of production in 2005 it accounted for 14 percent so that was a pretty popular spec and i'm also including se in with those numbers as well in its total time of production from 2001 to 2005 the MG ZT, however, for every 11 Rover 75 sold by MG Rover, um, only one ZT appeared. That's not great. That's not a great number. But where it gets really bad is for every 17 saloon MG ZTs sold by MG Rover, there was one MG ZTT tour sold. So if you start looking at the production figures, uh, how hard it is to try and track down a car, maybe if you're looking at a particular color or spec or whatever, I would really, really encourage someone who's having a hard time looking for an MG ZT and especially ZTT that suits their specification needs to look towards a contemporary. All in all, they're basically the same car. Whenever... 2002 happened, MG Rover added a specification called MG ZT SE, which was basically all the options available, tick. The contemporary follows on with that, and truth be told, I think it was just a nice little easy badge ticking exercise for them. Where it gets really interesting now is these cars are 20 years old, so qualify for classic insurance. Brilliant, happy days. 
Um, this one being a 2005 doesn't just yet. I'll do that next year. But where I did notice was when I was getting a quote for this year, my heavily modified, and I'll do another video on the modifications in another day, my heavily modified Rover 75 Contemporary Diesel SE Auto cost me more to insure than a bog standard MGZ TT SE 135 diesel auto that I have sitting there beside me. It was £120 more per annum. Both of the same insurance company. That a standard MG was going to cost me more than a modified Rover 75. How do you explain that? I don't know. Same amount of no claims bonus and all that nonsense. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And I also have done a couple of the uh, Go Compare Mere Cats thingy my jobbers. And prices are typically anywhere between 120 to £200 of insurance difference for the same car. Essentially the same car, just wears a different badge. Badge engineering at its finest. Um, British Leyland still survives to this day, as we all know. And it's certainly something worth considering when it comes to putting money in your pocket. You're going to be paying the same amount of road tax anyway. Um, running costs are going to be virtually identical. But with the age of the cars, there becomes a small problem. This is something I really want to hammer home. There are different spring codes for the contemporary. There are different shock codes for the contemporary. Things like this really, really matter. A lot of the times people will just have put a generic shock into the car or a generic spring into the car and will have compromised what the car really is. There are availability from the likes of Rimmer Brothers, the correct specification springs and shocks for these cars. If it was me and I was buying a contemporary, the first thing I'd be looking at is when has this had suspension work done? Has this had spring work done? Etc. Because in a weird sort of way, a lot of people will probably just have fitted a generic Rover 75 spring into this car, which takes away from that slightly sweeter handling, slightly sporting handling that the Contemporary had from factory. Shocks, no doubt, were probably replaced with generic units matching up. You know, a diesel shock to most people is a diesel shock, not understanding the variations of them all. Um, even for heaven's sake, there's actually a connoisseur specification shock absorber. A lot of people don't realise whenever you actually look down the actual options lists on the spring and shock codes. If I was buying one of these and it needed work, I would be putting ZT springs and suspension into it. I would be doing it that way. If you can find one that's been well looked after, has the correct spring codes, shock codes, that sort of stuff in it, it's a great car. It's a wonderful compromise between a 75 and a ZT. I don't think you're going to get a better option in the range. I don't think value for money at current prices, the way they're sitting, you're going to get a better option. They are starting to disappear. More and more people were buying these to break in the last few years because it was very common that a contemporary used to come with the V8 premium bumper that was obviously held in high regard by the uh, Rover 75 community. I know plenty of people have bought 75s purely for the bumper and sold the car on with a basic bumper. Might have done that myself. One of those things. <sighs> I don't know. I'd really like to hope I've convinced people into looking at a contemporary as a genuine option, as perhaps their first Rover 75 or as their first MGZT. And I know that's controversial. People are bad snobs, and I know that. They are such a good package all in. What you can get value-wise compared to what else is on the market out there at the minute. It's hard to beat. That's that. That's my kind of a mini rant about this. This has been one I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time. Um, I know my car's a modified example, and I will do a video on this as discussed in a later date. But nonetheless, I feel that this is one that people are missing out on. And time is marching on. These cars are disappearing. If anyone has the chance to experience a nice contemporary, I think people would agree with me that it's as modern a rover as you could want while still feeling like a rover. And it's as enjoyable an MG 
you could have while still feeling like a ZT and not being too uncomfortable for a daily basis. That's that. As always, folks, thank you very much for enjoying Robson Rover Repair. If you have enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Um, I'll be back with more videos ASAP as soon as I can drive again. <laughs> <laughs> just, anyone who's been following my private videos will know the details of that but nonetheless thank you very much folks i look forward to catching us all in the next video and get out and spend some spanners and above all get out and buy yourself for over 75 contemporary because they are cheap as chips and if you guys don't buy them i'm gonna end up buying them and i'm starting to run out of room here in my yard <laughs>